So at our hemifacial spasm center, sometimes patient ask me, doctor are you against Botox injections? So I tell them, no I am not against Botox injections, but they just don't cure your problem. I will tell you why and this is the purpose for which I am making this uh, particular video. Let us understand why in the first place one has hemifacial spasms. The reason lies in neurovascular conflict in majority of the cases. Now there are some exceptions 2% to 3% do not have this conflict. They have multiple sclerosis or some other disorders which obviously we diagnose first and we do not offer uh, microvascular decompression for them. But in majority of the patients the cause is the neurovascular conflict. What does it mean? It means that the facial nerve which comes out of the brain just above the medulla oblongata and below the pons that is pontomedullary junction that is brain stem and then comes out and then supplies one part of the face. It is getting continuously compressed by a blood vessel inside the skull of course, but it is getting compressed by a blood vessel. Why does it happen in these patients? Because their anatomy is as such, the size of the posterior fossa or the space where the nerve lies, specific blood vessel shape is such that starting from the birth, the blood vessel is precariously near the nerve. As the age advances, the blood vessels, they become elongated, they become long. Now this happens in everybody. For example, if you look at an, an elderly person's hand, you will see a tortuous vessel. As the age advances and the vessel is elongating, what will it do? It will slowly burrow itself into the facial nerve. And where is this happening? It is happening inside the skull that is near the brain stem. As it is progressively burrowing itself in the root entry zone of the facial nerve, it will start imparting its pulsations because blood vessels, that is arteries have pulsations. In brain, even veins have significantly strong pulsations. So, these are the pulsations hitting on the nerve. Okay? Now, these pulsations are causing damage to the nerve over the period of time and they cause demyelination. Or in simple words, let us say they remove coating from individual nerve fibers. So, there is a short circuiting. It is called as demyelination. Now, this demyelination causes these hemifacial spasms. So, it is a pulsatile compression. It is not only compression, but it is pulsatile. Do you understand what I am saying? It is a pulsatile hammer-like compression of facial nerve. Now, you suppose you take Botox. What does Botox do? Botox will paralyze these muscles. It is a paralytic agent. It is a controlled paralysis. So, it will paralyze these muscles for some time, maybe 2 months, 3 months. So, uh, immediately after taking Botox, you will feel that the face has become very, very heavy and numb and then the spasms decrease. But what is happening during this 2 to 3 months? The compression is increasing inside because the blood vessel is elongating. As you can see in this particular video, there is a blood vessel which is compressing the facial nerve and the patient comes to the hemifacial spasm center with moderate symptoms. So, let us say this is a day 0 or day 1 and this blood vessel is continuously pulsating against the nerve causing demyelination. The spasms are slowly increasing in nature. Suppose the patient does not do anything at this point of time, just waits or takes Botox to mask the spasms. After 6 months or 8 months, blood vessel will elongate further and then burrow inside the nerve even further. Here, the spasms would have become severe. Let us say still the patient does not do anything about it. So, we will land up with this kind of a situation. Extremely ectatic, very, very tortuous vessel which is compressing the facial nerve, causing severe nerve damage, distortion of the nerve as you can see here. Some of these symptoms uh, can be so severe that the, the face continuously remains contracted on one side for uh, 30 seconds, 40 seconds. Uh, so, this is what we call as a very severe state. So, suppose you take Botox on day 1 
and you feel that for two to three months the spasms are less when the effect of the botox wears off many patients in our series of mvds which we have been doing for last 15 years at this center they have told us that after the botox effect wears off the spasms come back not only come back but they come back with vengeance they are increased in intensity and frequency why because obviously the compression that is causative agent is inside increasing you are just masking from outside and you are letting the basic causative agent to be there it cannot be a treatment of hemifacial spasms because to treat it you have to aim at cure and my mvd surgery or microvascular decompression surgery is the only available uh, technique through which these spasms can be stopped and this is what i have been telling at our center continuously that doesn't mean that i am against botox at all it doesn't mean that i only want to say that botox is not the right treatment for this reason you keep on taking botox you are allowing the blood vessel to elongate and the disease to worsen so what is the downfall if at the end of 7 8 years you come to me and then say now you operate the surgery becomes more difficult because the nerve has got distorted the blood vessel has elongated to such a degree that it is now difficult to approach it and uh, separate it from the nerve not that it is impossible many of the patients in our series have come after 7 years 8 years but the results at that point of time can be sometimes not as good as uh, rather early surgeries but when one realizes the life is getting affected a person is not able to face the society person is not able to go uh, to different social functions cannot go for uh, young people cannot go for interviews they cannot uh, enjoy life they cannot get married they cannot uh, do their job properly just imagine a front desk employee who has hemifacial spasms and she has to talk to the customers continuously so how embarrassing it would be so this embarrassment is not only cosmetic it starts taking hold of the entire psyche and the person becomes depressed so this is a chain you know they are not just uh, uh, momentary spasms some of the patients have told me that doctor even my relatives have not understood me because they say oh these are some flickers you get sometimes that's all right let them happen but i am suffering as a person i am going in my shell i am becoming depressed i am not able to enjoy life i feel embarrassed so sometimes i feel that life is not worth living so some people that is exactly 12 people out of 220 plus mvd is done for hemifacial spasms have told us that at some point of time they had contemplated suicide now this is how it actually tarnishes your confidence so that is the reason why i say that people have to be guided properly botox and microvascular decompression they cannot be compared one is temporary not only temporary it is allowing your disease to increase inside and dragging you into the ditch of uh, severe spasms and the other treatment is aimed at permanent cure now some patients are told that no no the surgery is very risky no no surgery is not effective so now i am speaking at the end of 15 years not on the first day and these results we have presented in the recent international conference and we have 99% success rate when we select the patients carefully yes there is a incidence of 0.25% 0.25% that is one quarter of 1% risk but the risk is there in every daily activity the risk is there even in taking botox botox or any chemical injected in the body cannot be without risk any medicine taken cannot be without risk so you have to take some risk you can make sure that one gets operated in high volume center by a person who is uh, experienced in this in this surgery but please do not compare a microvascular decompression surgery with botox please that's what i try to tell the patients please do not tell me that this is option which is comparable to this option that's all i have to say about botox i am not about uh, against botox botox is sometimes uh, extremely useful in some other conditions like person who has got uh, extreme spasticity 
after stroke if the botox is given in the muscles the muscles relax and they are able to use their hand to some extent so botox is uh, useful in certain cases but in hemifacial spasms before you take botox or keep on taking botox rather please be aware that you are allowing the uh, neurovascular conflict to progress you are allowing the disease to progress and you are making future surgery if at all required more difficult it is my duty to inform this to you the choice obviously lies with the patient but choice should be always given with knowledge one should not give choice without knowledge the another cogwheel of this knowledge is that there is a specific center for this surgery in india itself to the best of my knowledge in the whole of asia there is no other center like this which is dedicated to microvascular decompression surgery is done for hemifacial spasm and trigeminal neuralgia and now we can say with some pride because we have worked for 15 years and we have analyzed our results and presented them in a peer group meeting that is international peer group meeting that we have been fairly successful and the credit goes to the entire team i am not saying that because i operate the results are good no it is always because of the team i need good dedicated anesthetists i need good dedicated post operative caregivers i need good counselors uh, they have to counsel them properly not only uh, about the choices and other things but also be very kind to them because these patients are depressed so the results are because of the entire team but yes we have been able to deliver good results as compared to the international standard we are able to stand shoulder to shoulder with the international results if not better so i can today say with some confidence that in the year 220 and 221 please do not uh, tell patients about microvascular decompression surgery in a negative light because the results are dependent on technology which has improved leaps and bounds in last 10 years please be aware of these facts if you have such problems do not hesitate to call us we will guide you final decision is always the patient's decision but do not be misinformed or ill informed please help us spread this message in the society about the signs symptoms treatment options modalities and cure possibilities of hemifacial spasms and trigeminal neuralgia thank you very much for listening and i hope you have got important information through this video